we do have some private people that has expressed an interest to assist us in this endeavor as far as keeping the cost down and with the possibility of grants and uh, a private involvement in the finances we feel that we may be able to bring this uh, training center about here in Alamance County. There are two sites that's being looked at. One is in the, the uh, right outside of Swetsonville and one off the Austin Porter Road near the landfill. That particular site at this time uh, looks uh, the best as far as the cost and as far as the safety of, of uh, anybody surrounding that particular training center. One Russell Stover box, please. Thank you very much. There's been talk among the law enforcement agencies, predominantly law enforcement agencies and some of the county fire departments, for a need for a training center for all emergency personnel here in Alamance County. And there's many reasons for that. Uh, first of all, we need the training. Uh, you've seen all the school shooters, uh, a lot of the major things happening uh, in, in America today. And we feel like that we need to, to get a jump on this from happening here and be able to receive the best possible training and also uh, be able to work together hand in hand when something major happens. We're all in this business together. And over the past four or five years, there's been a discussion with the law enforcement agency heads with the community college about trying to develop a regional training center. We have, uh, you know, two training centers for emergency personnel, particularly law enforcement, the Edinville Justice Academy and the Salemburg Justice Academy. One east, one west. This way, our officers and uh, emergency service personnel can come to class, go home at night, spend the night, save the uh, uh, agencies from having to send people out of state to Edinville, to, to Salemburg, the closest driving track uh, that I'm aware of here is uh, at Tyler Webb Pro Facility in Raleigh, North Carolina. And in talking with uh, a lot of the agency heads, this is one of the, the biggest, biggest concerns is, is the driving track and teaching our officers and emergency service personnel how to safely operate motor vehicles uh, while responding. Uh, what we're looking at and is a driving track to be developed which probably would be the first step in this particular endeavor. A firing range, a firehouse where our firemen could train going in under the conditions of fire and smoke, a fire tower for our uh, fire departments uh, to use, a physical fitness course, and certainly classroom training space that would accommodate all the emergency services they may be a large law enforcement training classroom, a fire classroom, uh, other emergency service personnel classrooms. We find it very difficult uh, in finding classroom space to conduct trainings here. Secondly, a lot of the large scale trainings that we try to send our people to specialized training, we've had to go to Washington, D.C., we've had to go to California, we've had to go to Las Vegas, we've had to go to Hawaii, and we can bring, according to the college, we can bring those instructors here a whole lot cheaper than we can send our people and get uh, very, very good specialized training for our emergency service personnel. And let me interrupt you. Not a good specialized training in Hawaii, is it? Oh, yes, sir. That was some good training out there. But the Department of Justice put it on. <laughs> but... Uh, How come I never get signed up? Sir, if you, if you want to join the emergency services, we'll be glad to let you we'll try to do it. But it's, you know, I think this is going to be important down in this Like I said, the community college is overwhelmingly in support of this endeavor. And they initially, uh, they would actually run the program and be using our instructors. The, the city has several law enforcement instructors that teach out at the BLAT. That, that program all would be moved to this particular training center. And uh, I'll be honest with you, this has been a need for many years here. And uh, uh, 
we're coming forth uh, and going to try to develop. And, and I can tell you right now, I'm one of the best beggars you've ever seen when it comes to finance. Sheriff, how many different? Uh, uh, how many other counties have something similar? Counties, uh, Greensboro has their own fire training center and a partial uh, uh, law enforcement training center. Right. Uh, the, I think Sanford Community College has a small track where we've had to, uh, to send our people for a pit maneuvering uh, you know, as far as chasing, taking cars out, etc., and driver's training. Uh, and really, a center like we're talking about, uh, you won't find it uh, around here, I don't think. Winston Salem has a uh, fire training center, and uh, I think they may run their own academy but they don't have the facilities like we're talking about. Uh, High Point, you know, they, I think they have their own training academy, but nothing like we're talking about here. You envision something like this could be ultimately be uh, when you're putting in these instructors or something that the county could actually recoup some money from by making these programs available to other counties and cities. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Especially uh, some of these. Big schools that we're having to send officers out to, and if they bring that here, yes, sir, leave. There could be a charge for them to come in here. Sure. Uh, Single one. I guess the next question for Chief Smith and Chief uh, Smith would be what would we gain out of participating with this in reference to what we currently have right now? Uh, you know, we certainly have a pretty well tuned system for doing our annual training at, at our training site. Um, and we do that because it keeps our people very close to the city, so if we have to respond for something, we're able to do that. So I don't know that we would change that up front, but it certainly does give us some good potential for, like he says, the bigger schools and, and the other uh, invited in kinds of classes. So day-to-day -day stuff, probably not much, but on an annual basis, there will certainly be a number of opportunities to increase the specialized training that might be available to our officers. I think the fire department's in pretty much the same. Yeah, we're, we're pretty much the same thing. You know, daily... On a daily basis, we wouldn't probably have the opportunity to send somebody far out of the city, even though technically we're out of the city now, but uh, we could recover very quickly. But it's the specialized uh, things like Sheriff Johnson talked about, where you get really good instructors instead of having to go far away to get these people. It would be a nice facility where these big name people would come in uh, to do training. So it would be specialized more on a daily basis. The specialized stuff is, is what we would be looking for, as well as the burn building, maybe trying to utilize that in some way because we don't have a burn facility to actually burn in. Gary, Indiana. What a wonderful name. Named for Albert Gary of judiciary fame. Gary, Indiana, as a Shakespeare would say, trips along softly on the tongue this way. Gary, Indiana, Gary, Indiana, Gary, Indiana, let me say it once again. Gary, Indiana, Gary, Indiana, Gary, Indiana, that's the town that knew me when. Now if you'd like to have a logical explanation, how I happened on this elegant syncopation, I will say without a moment of hesitation, there is just one place that can light my face. Gary, Indiana, Gary, Indiana, not Louisiana, Paris, France, New York, or Rome, but Gary, Indiana. Gary.